Okay. So, good morning. Uh, today we are going to take up some uh, case examples from select industries from different sectors to see that how they have implemented knowledge management strategy, uh, what kind of benefits they have arrived and what are the processes that they he have used. And if you remember we before this we talked about uh, how came uh, industry in uh, came uh, is various type of industry whether that is manufacturing or IT or in public and private sector have fared. Okay. And we have seen that this uh, though technically they are doing uh, better, but uh, so far other factors are concerned like leadership, culture, sharing these things are still lacking in most of the companies in India. So, we are here taking some examples and we will discuss it one by one to see that how KM has uh, been implemented in these organizations. So, we start with uh, Tata Steel, Tata Steel is a big uh, company in, uh, into iron steel sector and if you look at uh, the Tata Steel, uh, you can see that what is their strategy, what kind of strategy they have so that they can get certain benefits. So, they have uh, three kind of uh, strategies basically, and they go for codification so that uh, tacit knowledge is transferred into explicit knowledge. and they have a system for cap capturing deployment and use of knowledge management and this transfer is independent of time and space. So, they have a system which is connected through net you can see the picture that yes you can always have access to information anytime anywhere and that is how they have been able to develop a knowledge management system which is uh, <coughs> again uh, basically uh, it is they are trying to capture knowledge. Uh, of various processes or systems that are being used by people in the organization, so that it is made tacit, explicit and then again from moving from explicit to tacit, so that people are able to make use of it, learn it from it, get certain insights and then try to use it and then they further share it. So, it is a cycle of codification that goes on from tacit to explicit again from explicit to tacit. Similarly, they have also arrangements for uh, personalized uh, uh, systems where uh, you go for uh, say uh, sharing knowledge at a personal level and that is known as tacit to tacit okay, uh, where people are uh, interacting collaborating and sharing their knowledge across groups divisions and units okay. and uh, they have also created knowledge communities uh, which include uh, various stakeholders like employees the various departments customers vendors and also and uh, they have uh, these uh, communities especially related to say customers uh, management or say uh, relationship management or suppliers management and that happens usually through knowledge communities. And similarly, they also have a idea which is known as knowledge manthan that is churning uh, for uh, people who are working at the shop floor. The basic idea of having this knowledge manthan is that a lot of uh, the people who are working at the shop floor from uh, very long period and they have gained lot of experience and insight into the working and they can better tell that how to improve systems and processes. And that is how they are using these uh, shop floor employees to come out with ideas which could be implemented in the organization for improving quality, efficiency, productivity and these kind of things. Similarly, they also have a system of knowledge diffusion and uh, it is known as knowledge assets. So, knowledge assets like uh, they have created knowledge programs, communities of practices and projects through which they try to uh, see that the knowledge diffuses across verticals okay, horizontally also and they also see to it that how it is going to be used by the people. So, they conduct quizzes, seminars, conferences, debates okay, uh, related to idea generation, use and also how we can improve about the knowledge management system. So, that we have better distribution and dissemination of information. So, with these strategies uh, if you look at uh, how the KM system has been implemented in Tata Steel, they have followed three major uh, steps that is KM initiation, then they have established repositories and finally, they have created knowledge communities. Now, at the first stage if you look at it knowledge uh, management initiation, they basically uh, got people from different uh, backgrounds. Okay and different functional areas okay. and they have also got gone for cultural transformation. The cultural transformation basically helps in facilitating knowledge sharing okay. and at the same time they have, have made it sure that there is a enough support from leadership uh, in terms of resources, commitment from the top management okay. and they have also looked into 
uh, IT issues basically in infrastructure issues that so that there is a better connectivity and content is available to those who require it and they uh, have got cooperation and all these tips are part of the initiation where they have tried to bring and develop a knowledge management system and at the same time they have also created uh, repositories. Uh, these repositories basically include uh, 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 knowledge that is shared um, by the people uh, over the internet or intranet okay. and they have also created portals and blogs where they try to see that if there is any query from anyone uh, on the knowledge portal it is being answered by somebody. Uh, so, the knowledge that is created can be useful and they have uh, also created uh, explicit knowledge uh, for the people at different levels maybe at the senior level, the junior level and at also at the department level. So, that people do not need to look for knowledge elsewhere. So, these uh, they, the knowledge is available in codified and classified form for different departments. So, that they can have access okay, without uh, wasting the time and resources. Then they have created communities as I told you that they have uh, tried to see that how people are going to facilitate and collaborate uh, with each other. So, they have tried to create communities of people who are interested in such activities. Okay. So, they have uh, tried to see that those who want those who are interested such like minded like minded people come together and form knowledge communities and they have also used brainstorming I have already talked about it which is going to help basically to start with first idea generation and at the second is stage how we are going to evaluate this idea and reach the conclusion right whether it is going to be useful or not. And they have also tried to see that how they can capture the expertise or the knowledge which is there with the experts um, that is basically available in the form of tacit knowledge. Okay. And they have to see that how different communities of people especially uh, they have created for this purpose like they have uh, instituted uh, certain categories of people like knowledge champions, conveners who is going to coordinate these kind of activities. Okay practice leaders who are uh, lead experts, lead experts are those who are going to coordinate activities across experts and then practitioners knowledge management practitioners and all these uh, communities basically try to see that they are able to facilitate the process of knowledge sharing and that is how it is going to be useful right. Apart from uh, these steps that have been done you can also see that uh, um, how uh, this uh, knowledge management system have evolved over a period of time. Okay, at the first phase when this knowledge management system was adopted by Tata Steel uh, in 1990 or 2000, they, it was basically they were uh, you know, trying to create awareness that how it could be useful, uh, what kind of system or processes there should be in place and then uh, they actually launched KM portal at that particular stage and then they also try to see that what kind of benefits they are going to get out of this knowledge management system and then whatever uh, short uh, wins that they had they try to actually uh, put it on the website and then so that people could, could see that what are the benefits of having a good knowledge management system. Second phase basically they try to uh, uh, develop communities of knowledge people okay. and then they also try to see that uh, how the knowledge portal that is going to be used by the people is secure and safe. And then they also try to create at the third stage which is known as KM index. KM index basically talks about how much knowledge is being created stored, what is the status of the repositories and the extent to which people are going to make use of knowledge. Okay. And they also try to see that community index that uh, what is the status of the community index so that is appreciating or uh, depreciating and at the same time they want to see that what are the different processes which is being adopted across organizations. Okay. And then they also uh, launch uh, uh, on an experimental basis the ask the expert. So, any person can ask a question related to solving a problem to an expert and experts were supposed to answer these questions through net or other mediums. And then they also introduce a recognition system where people who are sharing knowledge, who are creating knowledge okay, are those who are going to use knowledge for the benefit of the organization were being recognized in terms of rewards, incentives and other things. In the last phase they also try to make it more participatory while by involving supervisors in the process and the the focus was more on not uh, creating knowledge instead of transforming tacit to explicit, but they also try to see that new knowledge is created so that they can improve systems and processes in the products. And uh, at the same time they also try to create not physical communities but virtual communities. So, 
through which people are connected and then they try to share uh, their knowledge and uh, ultimately they also included the customers and suppliers into this network of knowledge management system and that process is still going on. Now, if you look at some of the benefits that have been derived by uh, Tata Steel like they have been able to see that there is a better collaboration interaction among the employees ok. Uh, they could find that yes expertise is available with them people who are more satisfied with the job ok and they have uh, there are certain uh, benefits monetary benefits like reducing the cost on R and D activities ok. A uh, lot of uh, ideas which were duplicated were reduced because uh, once you are going to integrate all the ideas you can see where the duplicacy is there and then you can these duplicate ideas were reduced. Similarly, that help the knowledge uh, Tata Steel to gain a competitive advantage in the market and that also helped them to increase the productivity. So, if you look at the benefits uh, basically they were able to use ex ex existing knowledge uh, and also create new knowledge they also uh, it also helped them to reduce cost and increase revenues profits and other things. But there were certain other benefits which uh, implied that yes, people are also happy and satisfied because they were a being a part of it and they see that how knowledge sharing these activities has really not only helped them in terms of their personal professional development, but also the organization growth and development. And as I told you that Tata Steel has been conferred with the prestigious uh, make award many times at almost 6 to 8 times they have got this uh, most admired knowledge enterprises award. Now, if you look at how this they are going to use this at the Tata Steel. So, the what they are going to do is that they are going to start a learning process with the key KM repositories uh, and KM communities. So, that you can go for personal professional growth ok and they have also tried to create intellectual capital index ok and they are also trying to get the experience they make use of the experience of those who have left the organization that are retired it. So, that the long experience and knowledge inside that they have could be transferred from tacit to explicit and this has also been used for employee growth and development and similarly also they have tried to see that how they can integrate not only the knowledge of the employees, but also the knowledge that resides with the customers and vendors. So, that it could be a part of the knowledge management system. So, the idea is that when they are going to move in 21st century they would be able to satisfy the requirements of the customers ok. They are not going to create only physical assets, but also going to see that people are having those critical competencies which is required for competing in the future ok. So, after Tata Steel we will discuss another uh, major company which has initiated knowledge management in big way. It is an IT company Infosys and if you look at Infosys uh, they basically started a knowledge management system way back in 1990 and then they also la launched a, uh, a portal that is known as K-Shop in 2000 and they also introduced knowledge currency units in 2001 um, and it and th that is how you, you can use and contribute to knowledge shop. And if you look at knowledge currency unit it was again modified and the emphasis was placed more on knowledge sharing and visibility than getting monetary rewards ok. And they also uh, further they tried to see that the kind of contributions that was made to the knowledge shop. They wanted to just the quality of the contributions that was made to the knowledge shop ok. And uh, by 2005 uh, Infosys had a very good knowledge management system and it, was it also uh, is a part of the make global award system and it started with 2005 and uh, again in 2016 it is there in the list. Now, if you look at uh, knowledge management system that they have adopted it is actually they have developed a model which is known as knowledge management maturity model. Uh, which is in analog with what we call the people capability maturity model. So, it is not exactly PCMM, but it is uh, basically related to how they are going to evolve and develop a knowledge management system in the organization. It uh, has three prongs uh, uh, that is people orientation, process orientation and technology oriented ok. And each level has a set of requ requisites and then depending upon the level of maturity ok, you have to see that what kind of uh, capabilities from the organizational size is required. So, that you can reach to that uh, level of maturity. So, depending upon the capability it is decided that ok this is the maturity level and then each uh, maturity level actually is characterized by efficiency and on the knowledge life cycle uh, in terms of acquisition, dissemination and use acquisition that how are we going to acquire knowledge, how are we going to distribute knowledge and the extent to which people are going to make use of knowledge. 
Now, if you look at this, uh, first is by default undefined, uh, it is basically related to people capability. Second is basically reactive, where you are going to see that the certain things that is being repeated, the reuse, and at the third stage, basically, you are trying to make them aware. Uh, it is it is more restricted data driven decision making basically and then you try to uh, leverage your internal expertise uh, you try to increase the internal efficiency and also try to focus on virtual teams which are working together then uh, moving to the next level uh, if you see that yes at the first level yes it is basically uh, thinking that yes we, this is required for your survival okay so the people need to be convinced at this level okay and they need to be trained uh, for the role, uh, so that they learn certain things which is very much uh, which is basically a prerequisite and uh, the knowledge uh, that was uh, residing with the organization was fragmented in different units and pockets of the organizations and also in the people's head which was basically tacit in nature. The second level, uh, level was more reactive uh, where you try to see that people are going to share the knowledge depending upon the requirement and the kind of knowledge that was shared was morally, uh, mostly. Uh, routine and procedure knowledge that how to perform a job, how to write code and these kind of things, um, but it was not very useful. And if you look at the uh, result areas that was expected at this level that knowledge awareness, how people are going to be aware of the knowledge okay. and then uh, you have to see that yes, there is a formal knowledge management system and then uh, there is an administrator who is going to be in charge of the uh, database. right? Then uh, second level you basically they also try to focus on the processes. Okay, that how uh, knowledge is going to be used for different kind of things, how it is going to document it, okay, uh, how the uh, content is going to be managed and compiled, okay, who is responsible for these kind of things. So, basically uh, this was related to creating a knowledge management architecture and how we are going to create repositories okay. and then ultimately the, we also try to look at the role of the technology in the process, because uh, you have to see that uh, your KM system is more IT driven so that you can uh, have a system which is more integrated okay and you, there is no duplicity data redundancy is not there okay so uh, these kind of things were there and then it, you have to say that how are we going to make use of this it system okay for knowledge sharing okay so they also try to create this kind of things at a third level basically you try to create more and more awareness make sure that okay the content that is available is going to be useful for different requirements and then when you try to look at the knowledge life cycle basically you try to see that yes uh, the knowledge is available at different levels at the enterprise level at the unit level at the department level and then you also try to see the nature of the technology that would be required okay and then how are going to uh, leverage uh, the expertise to transform tacit into explicit using technology okay and then uh, you they also try to see that how knowledge management is going to be evaluated using uh, different kind of metrics which could be financial or non financial metrics like we discussed earlier like you can use benchmarking balance the scorecard or similarly return on investments in knowledge management activities and then you see that how managers can facilitate knowledge sharing the process okay so that would help you to see the link between KM processes and the outcome that is associated with this okay so if you look at at this level basically they went for as repositories central repositories okay uh, who was uh, bas uh, and for that actually you had a group for infrastructure management which are responsible for this. Then you also try to educate people uh, so that they can use it okay. and they will also try to see that how people are going to make use of it. So, you collected uh, sorry uh, conducted formal training program for people so that they can make use disseminate facilitate create champions okay. and then you also try to see that how the repository is going to be structured so far as the content is concerned okay so you create an architecture for knowledge management system right try to see that how to codify and classify knowledge into different activities okay and then you have content management process in place for editing sharing publishing certification and maintenance of uh, knowledge and finally you have the, the technology base which basically help you to do it right the fourth level basically probably you are convinced that yes it is very very much important okay so uh, at this level uh, the organization tried to scale up the things and processes okay and it went beyond the boundary of the organization you also included others in the process okay and then also try to see that what are the benefits of knowledge sharing okay and what are the business impacts and finally you also created a feedback loop at different levels from employees customers vendors to see that how the system is working whether it is effective whether it is able to provide good results or not 
okay. And finally, and at this level, basically, you try to see that yes, it was custom, customer enabled. Okay, you had technology in place. Okay, you also created and the process is more updated and live so that people can use it. And you also went for a uh, configuration of uh, knowledge to try to see that how you want to integrate and manage the entire content. So you need some rules for configuration to try to codify and classify it using certain rules of logic so that people can make use of it. Now. Here the process was more you can say quantified. Okay. So, you try to see that whenever you are going to create or share knowledge, okay, it could be measured quantitatively and then also try to share the benefits of knowledge sharing and when people are going to make use of this knowledge at different levels, the extent to which they are going to make use of it. Okay. The idea is to quantify the use of knowledge, not only knowledge creation, but also knowledge sharing and also use so that you can measure the impact. And then uh, you also see that how the content management process is going to be quantified. And fi uh, at the fifth level, it is more important that you try to look into certain behavioral aspects like creating culture of sharing. And then you also try to see that uh, the knowledge uh, management system is not only going to help only people or employees, but move beyond that. Okay. And then you also try to see that yes, what is the return on investment to the knowledge management. So, so yes, if uh, whether the decisions that is taken based on the knowledge management system were useful or not, whether the increased benefits like productivity efficiency or not. And then you also try to see that how various environmental influences are going to impact these kind of activities. Okay. And then you also try to develop knowledge leaders in, in the field by appointing CEOs, CEOs and these kind of things. At this le level basically you are going went for more and more integration. Okay. And then you try to see that how you can leverage knowledge management system for the development of the organization for growth. So, try to measure in quantitative and qualitative terms both. And you also try to see that the extent to which it is going to be linked with the innovation because ultimately you are going to create knowledge management system to see that how it is going to be used by people to be more creative and innovative and come out with results in terms of improvement in the processes and products. Okay. So, that was very, very important for the organization. Now, if you look at this, uh, this uh, uh, probably is, uh, as I told you that at different level they try to do different things. At the first stage they try to create competency, second stage they try to use technology and then that at the last stage they try to see that how they can uh, augment R and D and other things uh, to create a knowledge base which is going to be very, very useful. Okay. And then they also try to look at some, some other issues that how, what kind of leadership would be required. Okay. So, uh, uh, what chief executive officer actually who drive the initiative and ultimately they try to appoint chief knowledge officers and have a separate knowledge management unit in the organization. They also try to create a building and learning environment okay. and uh, accordingly they try to develop a IT infrastructure okay. and also evaluating uh, uh, the knowledge management system. So, they develop certain metrics both qualitative and quantitative for measuring the impact of knowledge management. So, uh, if you look at how it is done, they have online portals through which uh, it is done. It is known as KNET through which you are going to share uh, anything, and then it also offers courses for professional and development of the employees. Okay, and then you can also take this to see that the extent to which you have been able to do it. And you are certified for certain things if you are able to do it successfully, and that is how people are able to use this knowledge net that is out online portal of at the Wipro. So this is how we look at uh, the. A web pro system. So, they have a system what you call knowledge management which is basically related to create, capture, organize, access and use of knowledge management system. And this is for both explicit and tacit knowledge and that is how it is done. Tacit knowledge through discussion groups, yellow pages, chats and explicit knowledge through documentation and the reusable competencies. And to support that you have uh, business processes, IT infrastructure and a KM team. And if you look at this, this is related to what you call KM business strategy basically you try to see how, how what is the impact of the KM and then what has driven to have a knowledge management system in place and then how values and culture of the organization is going to support. Okay. The idea is to appreciate the inter intellectual capital in the organization. So, if you start from here you can see that yes they need to have a knowledge management system where they are going to use both kind of knowledge explicit and tacit in the process and they also have a <coughs> dedicated team like uh, there is a chief knowledge officer headed by a knowledge, uh, knowledge management person head and he is you have other people in the verticals down the line. Okay. So, KM, KM head actually is directly reporting to the CEO of the organization. 
Now, they have also a system which is known as uh, my work mate, okay. uh, where they have gone for cloud computing these kind of things, where they are going to deliver services in full life cycle. So, these kind of things like if you are ready to go framework enables rapid tool based auto provisioning of knowledge structure, then you have knowledge analytics basically, which is uh, uh, combined with recommendation okay, and gamification and you will have intelligent search using, which is going to be very, very useful in the process. right? And the idea was to integrate knowledge management uh, system uh, starting with assessment, strategy, process and technology okay, for its sustenance and enhancement. Now, these are some of the benefits they have been able to derive good business value out of it, they have been able to empower em enterprise and uh, they have a better customer experience out of this. Right. Now, I am going to take another uh, organization that is Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Uh, which is a public sector organization. Okay. If you look at the CAM process, it is very robust and flexible and uh, if you look at uh, BHEL, they have a good document management system, uh, which provides role based access to documents. So, it is not all the documents not are not being accessed by everybody and if you look, uh, look at leadership issues, yes, top management has given uh, importance by created, creating a team for the implementation of knowledge management framework in the organization. They have also been able to build and collaborate learning environment and culture. Okay. So, they have tried to create a culture, uh, uh, culture for information sharing, relationship building and trust and they have also created a knowledge bank through its efficient and document management system. So, and they have created uh, tried to create infrastructure for knowledge management, especially a web portal for documentation and data and then you have a better inter user, user interface through a single vendor. And finally, they have tried to use certain metrics for measuring improvement in their systems and processes. Okay. Uh, they have internal metrics to see that how is central repository is being used by the individuals and teams across departments. Uh, now, we were moving to another uh, example that is ONGC. ONGC is a, an oil exploration, okay, uh, especially related to gas and oil. So, you can see that yes, uh, ONGC has initiated this process uh, very well and they have created an independent platform for KM resulting in the launch of a knowledge management portal. So, they have created a separate portal uh, knowledge management. If you go to this portal, you can find lot of documents and other kind of things which could be used and th they have tried to make it interactive through which people are ready to share their knowledge okay. uh, not only formally, but also informally and they have also launched a program which is known as Gyanodayan. Okay. The idea of launching this program uh, organization wise to see that how are going to share knowledge okay, and how people are going to share knowledge. Uh, working either individually or in the teams. So, the basic uh, idea of uh, Gyanode was to share tacit knowledge that is why it is known as experiential knowledge. The one that you get through uh, your experience okay, and working with the organization for a longer period. So, these experiences need to be shared okay, uh, with other people and once it is documented in some form that it is made available. So, they try to see that how experiential knowledge which is there with the experts could be uh, shared. Okay and which is available in the tacit form to make it more explicit. Okay. And they also try to develop a knowledge management system and they have also set up a virtual knowledge park. So, this uh, virtual knowledge park is nothing else, but a repository of contents and documents where you can uh, get lot of information depending upon your requirement. Now, if you look at objective of this uh, knowledge management system program at ONGC. Okay, uh, First of all, they try to identify the knowledge gap okay, at the individual level at the organizational level and they also try to create communities of practice and okay. uh, this is known as drilling the limit. This program is known as drilling, drilling the limit. The idea is to reduce the reduction time in drilling and squeeze the last bit uh, uh, information from uh, seismic uh, for maximizing the information value of seismic data because seismic data is very, very important and they also try to uh, reduce the drilling time. And for that they created communities of practices. So, they tried to come out with good practices which could be used by them. So, these best practices le uh, lessons that is learned from offshore structures uh, and well stimulated services also they have tried to use to find out gas and oil. Similarly, they have tried to leverage the vast knowledge of its workers in the field of exploration and petroleum technology to increase productivity, uh, reduce cost, save time and effort and also to improve quality. And now, if you look at this Gyanodayan program, it is doing very well in ONGC. 
Now, <coughs> what they have done basically some of the major initiatives that is taken by them like they have introduced the e-learning system, they have upgradation like and they have knowledge upgradation program in for employees which is known as Unnati Prayas, Super Unnati Prayas and Sangha Saptak. These are the programs for personal and professional development so that you are able to people are uh, able to develop critical competencies okay. and they have also formalized roles, positions, responsibilities accordingly to see that how it is, is going to help. And <coughs> they have also gone for interaction with the academia, so to acquire knowledge okay. So, they have gone for industry uh, academy interface in a better way, see how it is happening. Okay. Now, with these examples we also want to see that how these dimensions of uh, organizational impacts the knowledge management system. So, basically if you look at uh, knowledge management system it is going to impact people, processes, products and performance and that is why you will find that most of these organizations have moved for knowledge management system right. Now, if you look at how KM is going to help employees their learning and adaptability, it can facilitate learning of the employees, it can help employees to be more flexible and it also enhances job satisfaction and you can also better adapt and interact with each other ok. You better accept changes ok, you are prepared to respond to the changes provided you have those critical competencies and you understand the your responsibilities and you also know how game is going to be useful for you ok. And that is how they share their knowledge with each other to reduce turnover rates and increased revenues and profit. Okay, so, if you look at uh, the experiences of these company, uh, companies, they have been able to help it. Similarly, you will also find that it is able to help process, processes in terms of affecting their uh, improving their efficiency, effectiveness and uh, linking it with innovation also. Okay. So, it has been able to help uh, different uh, activities related to different processes like marketing, manufacturing, public relations and otherwise also they have been able to see that impact is on improving efficiency, effectiveness and also the innovation process in the organizations. Moving further if you look at uh, the process innovation or product innovation or what you call uh, process effectiveness, they have been able to do lot of things in terms of uh, see that how they are going to uh, use this knowledge event system to perform better ok. How they are going to see that yes, they are more efficient and also try to see that how it is able to help people to come out with innovative solutions ok and try to come out with more innovative systems and processes in the place ok. Similarly, they have it, al it has also come to help them to have better products and services, value added products and value knowledge based products which is basically an outcome of uh, knowledge management systems in most of the organizations which we have discussed now. Then it has also in had impact on the performance of the organization direct and in indirect like improving productivity and also see that yes the intellectual leadership in the industry, uh, better customer loyalty ok, having a better position to negotiate with respect to competitors and uh, partner organizations and that is how if you look at the select case studies in a nutshell we can say yes the organization has been able to benefit out of it. Thank you very much. <coughs>